Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to attempt to do a still life. I thought we'd do a little pumpkin sitting on a hay bale. It should be a lot of fun. And if you're enjoying these and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now I'm just finishing up a pretty quick sketch, maybe five minutes, maybe seven, something like that. Uh, most importantly, I got my pumpkin here. I've got two small little decorative pumpkins. Not that that's not decorative. It probably is, but you know. Uh, and then I've got my hay bale, and I've got, um, like, those are corn stalks, maybe dried up corn stalks. And let's do some wood in the background. I think that would look really cool. So we got to figure out, there's no sky, so we got to figure out where we want to put our clear gel and white mix. Um, which, for once, I actually did mix my orange, which I used to sketch with my clear gel. Um, very rarely will I do that uh, with my sketching, but because of so much to sketch, I just put a little bit in there, made it go a little faster. And I intend to be wiping this canvas frequently, so I think we're good. Um, I'm going to throw a little bit of, I think just a little bit of clear gel and white um, on the boards and maybe up here a little bit in where the corn is going to be. The reason is um, I'm treating that like my sky today. I want that soft and fuzzy. I don't want that sharp. If you wanted your boards sharp with um, lots of detail, then you would not do this, okay? This is only because I'm treating this like the sky. We'll just cover this like we would any other painting. Now we're going to go ahead and paint in our background boards. Obviously because there's white here, this will get a little lighter. And you'll see these little streaks. And I think we're going to try to save those streaks. We'll brush it only in one direction. There. Cut carefully around your pumpkins. The more of this you get in your pumpkins, the more sad you'll be. <laughs> No, it's not that big of a deal, but it'll be certainly easier if you don't have a whole lot of this. Good. This shows you how little of that clear gel and white we put, because I brought that all the way over my sketch, and I still see my sketch. I didn't ruin it. So there's just not a whole lot going on. I think down here I'm going to add a little more umber to my color. I just think that'll make it look nicer. Cool. Now, just like grass or trees or anything else that we paint in a landscape, we want to build, um, we want to build a little bit of form in our underpainting. You don't want to, well, I mean, you could, but I'm choosing not to come in here and just paint this all solid orange because it's be a lot more difficult to pick the highlights out and pick the shadows out. If you highlight or if you, yeah, if you highlight and kind of highlight and shade, it's not really the right term for what we're doing, but if you highlight and shade even in your underpainting, it tends to work out a lot better. I do that with grass. I do that sometimes with trees. I actually do that a lot with trees, darker at the bottom, kind of lighter at the top. What that does is it just gives you a head start and it's absolutely wonderful. I'm using uh, just a bunch of random color here. Now I will say, because we're doing a still life, the lighting is a little different than landscape. I've probably done three still life paintings. I don't know. They were real early on. I don't remember doing one recently. Have, have we done one recently? Flowers, and I guess this is a lot like a rose in that you kind of have to follow the lines. Actually, it's not as bad as that because um, pumpkins are wonky, aren't they? There's all sorts of um, deformed areas in them and they didn't grow straight. And Actually, I grew a pumpkin this year. That was kind of fun. Um, but anyway, the, they can grow any which way. And a rose is a little more structured and has to look correct. All right, now moving kind of around, I'll get some more of these. Not too much of the reds, but a little red. You want a lot of color in your still life paintings. That much I do know. All right, and we'll wipe all of this when we're done. So glop it on and we'll wipe it off. It's, it's a little faster to do it that way. Now these are gonna be more yellow ochre. So this pumpkin, I want you to keep it a lot brighter. So this is the bright one. These are a lot more dull. So keep the yellow ochre out of this for now. Good. A little too much red, you come back with yellow. See, just play around with it until you get it just the way that you want it. Now I'll mix up a nice, very, very light yellow with our three quarter brush. I actually put the yellow next to the white and then just add the white slowly because I don't want, I don't want it to become too light with white. You know, I just want it to be very, very yellowy. So that'll, that'll be a good way to do it. And then you can add more as you go. Okay, here we go. Now I do want a little bit of a white spot, kind of like a accent highlight somewhere in this area but for now right here we'll just stroke it right on 
I really don't know what the best way to do this is, so I'm gonna experiment around. I think this is probably gonna work out just fine. Wiping my brush on my palette each time I reload. Keeps that dirty paint off. Go up here a little more. Nice. Hey, sometimes the paint's a little thicker and sometimes it's a little thinner. That's okay. That's okay. I don't think that we're gonna have any issues with mud today. <laughs> Did I just say that? Yeah, I think, I think we'll be okay. The reason I think that is because I'm very careful to work here in the orange tones. Even my shadows are rusty tones. They all kind of play together okay. We shouldn't, shouldn't have any weird colors happening. There. We can always get our detail brush out to kind of finish up these little bright areas, which I, I'm sure we will. Just a, a matter of kind of building up your colors. It's not, it's not a two-step deal. I'm, I'm no pumpkin painting expert, but I'm just sure it can't be a two-step deal. And now I spent the last two seconds throwing in these little pumpkins here. I figured this is as far as we need to go. This is maybe highlight number one in there, a little feeling of shadow, not really. And then we've got our nice underpainting kind of with the detail already built in. So leave that pumpkin alone for a while. And we're going to come over and just begin to work on these. I'm just shading these now. I painted these in, like I mentioned, with yellow ochre, really pretty much a straight yellow ochre. And now I'm coming back and adding this little shadows and stuff. The light, you know, we haven't really mentioned it. The light's coming across like this. Lots of shadows on the left side might have other lights going on. You know, who knows? Because this is still life. There, that looks kind of cool, doesn't it? It's okay to be a little bit splotchy. It just helps to indicate the beautiful texture that's going on. Maybe put a little stem action. I'm not going to do the stems until much later, but I want to at least get them started. A little spot so that at least makes sense. Right over here, I'm going a little darker. We're going to have quite a bit of nice shading in this painting. So a little darker right here. Nice. And then honestly, you can go nearly black. We'll build up the shadows slowly so that they look a little more refined. All right, now I went ahead and squirted out some more yellow and I've still got a little white right there. I'll mix these together. I'm going for a very pure, clean, light yellow color. I'm gonna to try to highlight up here. Now, I may need to wipe it. I haven't done that yet. I've got my detail round brush, obviously. And I think if I turn it upside down, it might layer a little better. So we'll just set the brush down, give it a pull. You can kind of see a little bit gets picked up, so I'll wipe all of that off, reload, and continue. And I believe that this is going to be about it. We may be able to get one more highlight on toward the end if we choose. Just depends on how well you control the paint. There. Okay. I'm going to keep going to this since it seems to be working. Adding maybe a little more yellow as we go to the left. I do kind of want that light white spot, which I will get just like if you're doing a sunset, you know, with that sun, <laughs> it's really kind of cool to think about it that way. Not too much of the yellow. It's not a yellow pumpkin. It's just got yellow highlight is all. Now, one thing that I will say that I know from flowers, but even more, I've heard a lot of still life people tell me this, which is, don't just stop with like two colors. You got to put in a bunch of colors. People that know how to do these things, that's what they do. So we're gonna have purples and we're gonna have blues and greens and all sorts of, as many colors as I can pack into that pumpkin, I'm gonna do it. There. Oh yeah, I like that. Let me get a little brighter light on this side right here. Good, and then right there. All right, it wasn't mixing quite as bad as I thought it would, so I've got my brush going the other direction now. Really bring that around. I like the small brush for these larger areas because it creates a little more variation than a bigger brush would. Good. 
Now, let's go ahead and real quick, let me just get this color, a little red, get us a nice bright, bright orange. Okay. Yeah, something like that probably is okay. And I will take that and stick it right here at the top and then blend it in. Good. I like what that does. Creates a little more orange glow at the top. There, hopefully my hand's not getting in the way. Oh, I like that, it's starting to come together. We can always take a blender brush and hit it, but I don't wanna destroy all of my strokes. I think brush strokes are probably gonna be something that helps us out. Help to make this look a little more detailed than it is. So we're probably gonna go ahead and let all of this sit just for a minute and kind of look at it and maybe work on some background or foreground, I don't know. I just wanna look at this for a little while and decide if I need to go brighter or darker. I know I need a lot more highlight on those guys, but I'll probably end up having to wipe them off. Anyway, I wanna look right here at this back edge um, and I know that we want a sharp edge and a soft edge. This is my soft edge. I've got my little blender brush. I was just gonna throw this out of focus here. Just very softly. Just touch it. That's important. So important. Do this, you know, for a second. Stand back, make sure you like it. Come back, you can always do more. It takes a little longer <laughs> to go and do less, you know what I mean? To bring it back to where it was takes a little longer. Wipe the brush out. But what this does is it just creates more of a focal point. Your eye won't bounce around quite so much it's kind of an art thing. Now I'm gonna go ahead and underpaint our little hay bale here. I'm using mostly yellow ochre. I've got some other stuff kind of randomly, as you can see, randomly tossed in and around. I like the orange in there. I think that ties in with our pumpkin. Maybe do a little extra orange here right next to the pumpkin because what that'll do is it makes it feel like there's um, some reflected color. I'm just layering the paint on. With this brush, we'll sort of smooth it out maybe with a one inch brush or something. There, you just wanna get a lot of different colors happening for obvious reasons. <laughs> it just makes it look better. It's a pretty good reason, isn't it? Just makes it look better. All right, close enough. Let's see, I'll get that brush out. One inch brush, this is the dirty one. I'm just using it because it doesn't seem to be affecting it too badly. This is an underpainting, I don't want it terribly bright but it's hay and I'd rather put the shadows in. This is more of a mid-tone. And so often it's easier to do that. Just put the shadows in later. The dark always eats up the light. The light has a real hard time going over the lots of dark paint. There. So, mid-tones. Mid-tones are good to start with. And let me get some, just some umber. Throw that in right under here. Now let's go ahead and work on our corn stock. So I've got just, literally, I've just got random stuff loaded into this brush uh, and definitely in, in different areas. Do you see that? So that hopefully I can build in a little accidental um, highlight or shadow, you know, and then the parts that don't work, what I'll do is simply cover them up. I think this will just make for a slightly easier uh, little thing and I know I want a lot of detail in them and that just gives me a head start if they don't look right paint right over them. you'll never you'll never know there was an issue <laughs> cool yeah that looks good a little green I think that green is important a little speck of blue because why not <laughs> and I see right here good make that one a little thicker I've got quite a shine here and I may need to wipe this canvas or play with the lights. So if you see lighting going funny, <laughs> it's me playing with the lights in between shots. Okay, maybe there. It's probably enough of the, no, I'm gonna do a couple. I was gonna say enough of the colorful ones, but I don't think so. A couple that are a little larger. Yeah, very nice. And then I'll put some 
I'll put some more traditional brown ones right over the top of this. Let's do that. Now let's go ahead and add some highlights to the hay bale here. Now this hay bale is kind of, the slope off is a lot of paint. <laughs> it's kind of sloping off. So more of the highlights gonna be on the top. It's not so much hard, you know, like a brand new bale, but it's one that's kind of fraying apart. So let's go ahead and, and put more highlight here at the top and then we'll let it get darker down there. This is one of those few times when, you know, a little more mud is an okay thing. It just is. It, because you get more variation, you know, you get a light spot and then you transition out into darker areas. And that's okay for this. It's not really a feature anyways. So I probably won't wipe this area unless it gets real muddy. All right, that looks good. And it transitions softer as it goes back. Nice. Lots of random directions. Now I still haven't highlighted these pumpkins too much yet. This one's pretty much done on the highlight phase, I think. I don't think I could get it much brighter. Um, you see, I did do a little bit more blending. I just took my blender brush and I just sort of softened a lot of that shadow in. And I think that that helped seed it. Just make the paint it, or make the paint, yeah, make the painting a little smoother. The pumpkins are smooth. They're not so textured. So I think I like what that did. Let's go ahead and take our blue now on our detail round brush. I'm going to start on these little guys because I don't care too much about these. They're quick and easy. This one, I've got a little time invested in that guy now at this point. So um, I'm going to do a lot of my testing on my little pumpkins because I've got maybe five minutes in these little guys. Okay, 10 minutes, whatever. <laughs> I just want to see if I like this blue. Um, see, it's kind of nice. I just want a little, especially there. Okay, I kind of like it there. Just one little feeling of this blue on these pumpkins. It's important that we do that. There. Let me see. That definitely works. So I will do and take my blue and carefully. Maybe I'll start up here on the stem. I know I want blue on the stem. And just drop in a couple of these little stem um, highlights or shadows, like the ribs of the stem. Drop those in now. I know we'll need more. It's a good start though. And okay, where do we want this? Maybe right over here. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go sparingly. This is one of those rare times I'm a little bit on the cautious side. There. Obviously, the more you touch it, the more it goes green. So don't touch it too much. <laughs> Maybe a little extra right up on, on the top as well. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs, and Brushline. Thanks for watching.